along those lines, Tongi, let me ask you, um, we, we, you know, so we've talked about how the decisions are, are made, but what, what's the goal of, of treatment? And, and take us through yeah. um, the different scenarios and, and, and how you decide that. Yeah, I think we are lucky in head and neck cancer because we can cure many, many patients. So for early stage, uh, it's either, you know, oftentimes uh, single modality surgery, single modality radiation, uh, and that's relatively straightforward, although even there, there are toxicities. For intermediate stage, again, um, the goal is cure, and that's where the multidisciplinary team approach uh, actually comes in. Um, and even for local region advanced disease, we cure, the major we cure the majority of patients, and that's really when everybody has to work together because we treat these patients aggressively. In addition to curing patients who are potentially curable, we also want good functional outcomes. Obviously, there are implications from all treatments. If you have a tongue tumor, if you have uh, a larynx tumor, you want to preserve speech, swallowing, uh, functional uh, outcomes are paramount, and there's a balance. And I think, again, that's where the multidisciplinary team comes in and says, you know, the implications of doing radiation or surgery are this and this. And it's not a standardized approach for everybody. I think there's a little bit of a balance. So I would say the most important outcomes, first, cure, second, uh, good functional outcomes. But once we then move on to patients who have uh, recurrences, um, who have metastatic disease, the goal changes somewhat to prolonging life. Uh, and that's why I think the role of the medical oncologist becomes somewhat bigger, although some patients are salvageable with, uh, with uh, uh, aggressive approaches being a large surgery or re-radiation. But by and large, it's that sequence of, of goals. And I think patients obviously also have a big say in that because not everybody has the same goal. Absolutely. Victor, you talked earlier about uh, individualizing therapy, and uh, I'm, I'm going to guess that that also applies to the goals of therapy. Tell us a little bit more about how you approach it. Yeah, well, um, I, I think, uh, as Tongi said, I mean, cure is really, really what, what we would like to deliver to our patients, but certainly um, you have um, different patient populations, and some of them are not fit enough to go for multimodal therapy, and, and some of them, um, especially those that are older ones, they may not really... Uh, would like to wish to have a very aggressive therapy um, and th th they're more uh, served with, um, um, let's say, something that preserves quality of life and gives them um, a functional approach. So, um, so we talk about um, multimodality uh, teams, but um, there's also some, there's enough room for the, the wish of the patient. So what's the patient's perspective on the whole thing? And um, we also take that into account when we make our decision, of course. And I think it, 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 it's true for you as well. So, um, so despite having the medical perspective, there's also a patient perspective. We try to balance that uh, for each individual patient. And uh, Kevin, let me turn to you. I, I've, I've I've heard you uh, talk about uh, some patients, even with locally advanced disease, um, where uh, the goal shift from cure to palliation. And tell us a little bit about you know what what patients where that where maybe cure isn't appropriate, or that as a goal. Yes. Well, wherever possible, of course, it's incumbent upon us to try to seek curative treatment modalities for our patients. And when you have what looks like loco-regionally advanced disease, then you would always approach the patient hoping to achieve that. But if we look at a group of patients, for instance, and this is an increasing segment of the population that we see in my practice, um, more elderly patients, patients with severe comorbidities, um, pre-existing lung disease, often related to their prior tobacco use, pre-existing cardiac and cardiovascular morbidities, pre-existing metabolic problems, these patients are often unfit for surgical approaches or indeed more radical radiation and chemo radiation approaches. And indeed, as you know, the meta-analysis demonstrates that if we combine chemotherapy with radiation in a group of patients who've gone beyond their 71st birthday, the chance of them deriving benefit from that reduces significantly. Similarly, also hyperfractionated radiotherapy. So I think for us, the group of patients that we see most frequently where you might wish to try to achieve a cure, perhaps if that were a younger patient, um, in the more elderly patients, we more often find ourselves regrettably having to make a decision that the treatment approach should be really about palliating symptoms and maintaining quality of life for as long as possible. There are also a group of, of younger patients who do present late uh, with really very loco regionally advanced disease. And so the really invasive T4 tumors, uh, the patients with really bulky N3 necks that are adherent to loco regional structures, 
you will often embark upon treatment that is radical in its appearance, but you may recognize the fact actually that ultimately you might not be successful in any more than 30% of cases. And again, that is important to discuss with the patient in as much as they will want to hear that discussion, because quite frequently the patients who present with that sort of disease may be the ones who don't necessarily invite those conversations. But when you can, you try to have that conversation, because to deliver radical chemo radiation when you know that you may not cure the disease is actually to inflict quite a lot of additional toxicity on patients. Yeah, and, and, and it's certainly fair uh, to allow the patient to be involved in, in that discussion uh, because of the low chance of cure in, in very advanced disease. So, um, so age uh, plays, in, I've heard age plays into uh, these uh, discussions. Um, PS2, uh, so patients with a performance status of two, also did not seem to benefit from uh, the meta-analysis that, that you were referring to with respect to the addition of chemotherapy um, to radiation. 